What's up, do it yourselfers? So I've gone and done it, haven't I? I've made not only one, but two $200 gaming PCs. So one is mid-tier, sleeper style, with a slightly more expensive graphics card. And another one is enthusiast level. These two are ready to go head to head. So I'll run you through the builds. Firstly, I just pulled everything apart. The only thing I wanted off this build, a $100 build from the last video, the 10 euro cooler, the 6 euro hard drive, and the free case, throwing a 180 euro bundle. We're looking at under 200 euros for this whole build. You're not gonna believe this. i7 4770K unlocked. GTX 780 Ti. This is a beast, 750 watt power supply. And the cherry on top, an MSI gaming free motherboard. 16 gigs of RAM, DDR3, 1866 megahertz. Do you wanna know how I got it so cheap? Bring it in. Haggling, you've gotta haggle. Jump on your local websites, use the markets, talk to the people. They want 220, you offer them 150. They come back, I'll take 180. Yes, I'll take it. Go straight away. You're way better off to try and find someone selling their whole system like this. It ends up a lot cheaper than buying this bit and that bit and mix matching. If you can just find someone that just wants to get rid of the whole thing because they've done a new upgrade, this is the way to go. Stay to the end to see this thing 200 plus FPS in 2K all day. The heat paste underneath the IHS will be absolutely finished, it'll be done for. You wouldn't want to just overclock this, especially if we are only running this 12th gen stock cooler on it. So what I'm going to do is de-lit it. If we can overclock the heck out of this, Get your knife. Let's get some fresh blade on there. I just work at the corners. Even the corners on the middle bit. Just keep going each corner. These are glued on tighter than my a-hole on Christmas. You just gotta rock the knife blade into that little gap, prying it apart. Oh yeah, we got this corner. And so now we've got something to work with. Got another corner. Just rocking the knife. Oh, that's all four corners. Once you got the corners in, Work the middle, go from the corner across. You're not trying to go all the way through. You just want to get the blade in a little bit and then you can get your snapped off piece from the start and wedge it in on the corner. And once you've got a good solid line across, you can just give the knife a little twist and it will just pop off. Done a knife job of that one. Did it. See how dry that is? How's that supposed to do anything? Now the hard part. I'm gonna pick all this glue off. Soak it in pure alcohol. Soften it all up, pick it all off. Now if you ain't good with knives, just go and buy the little delitting tool that all the other YouTubers use. I ain't into that. Less money, the better. Now it is perfectly fine to put more thermal paste on this and you'll be alright but I'm going to put liquid metal because we'll be able to drop an easy 10 degrees off this chip to overclock it even harder but what I'm going to do is put some tape across anything that's conductive under here because unlike thermal paste liquid metal conducts electricity so if you put a little bit too much it's going to drip into the components and then you're going to have a shockingly bad time we're talking dire consequences. Okay, so this stuff's like 20 bucks. Hopefully I've got enough. I've already done two CPUs with it. Now you really don't need a lot. Luckily this is gillium, not mercury. It's probably enough. 
Fun fact, the saying mad as a hatter comes from back in the day when they put mercury in the brim of your hat and it used to make people go mental. Not a lot on there, we're just trying to get a little bit more out of it. Oh sh That's alright, suck it back up. Just remember it spreads further than a gymnast doing the splits. That will do. Liquid metal eats copper like no tomorrow. So these integrated heat spreaders are nickel plated, luckily, so that way it won't eat into it. See that? Now it's joined. I need to be super careful now. Personally, I don't like gluing the IHS back on. I want to be able to get back in here if I ever need to. Spot on. Hold your chip now. You don't want the clamp sliding the heat spreader over. Beautiful. Now hopefully I have enough Arctic Silver left to do one more chip. So if you're wondering how I managed to get a 12th gen cooler on a 4th gen chip, go back to my last video, the $100 build. I'll link it up here and you'll see how I managed to get that to work. Also, you'll see a lot of the cabling and other bits and pieces covered in that video as well. So the only difference with an MSI motherboard is the pins for your power and your HDD light and your speaker, they're not labeled. They just say JFP1 and JFP2. Here's a picture of the pinouts. Originally, I was gonna put all this enthusiast kit into the sleeper case. But this graphics card is way too big. It only just fits in here as it is. Oh, I'm friggin' stoked with how this build turned out. Let's boot into the BIOS and overclock it. So it's posting. Get ready to hit your BIOS key. Just crank my CPU fan. I've already updated the BIOS and then I'm gonna enable XMP. And I'm going to go into my overclocking settings, into advanced mode. I'm going to make sure we're on all core for ratio. And I'm going to set our ratio to 4, 2. Go down to our voltage settings. So then I'm going to go to CPU core voltage and type in 1.3 volts. And then I'm going to go into CPU features and I'm just going to disable C state. Cool, so now we can save and exit. Beautiful. Our CPU frequency is 4.2 gigahertz. Our DRAM frequency is 1866 megahertz. I just quickly ran user benchmark to see how this stacks up against other systems with the same caliper. And what do you know? We're in 100th percentile for CPU and 99th percentile for GPU. How good! And even our RAM was in the 95th percentile. Very happy with this. Smash that like button if you're surprised to see it benchmark so high. I've turned on some Apex Legends and then set up the graphics i turned down some of the demanding stuff sort of left it on high-ish but 1080p shouldn't be too hard for this card and i was screen capturing an obs studio as we get close to the ground our french and price enemies are falling from the sky and landing we we're getting some good frame rates but the loads were really low so i just checked in task manager to see what was loading up the cpu or the gpu Nothing seemed that bad. I couldn't understand what was going on. So in the end, I had to turn off OBS Studio and record with the GoPro. So I'm just gonna turn OBS off and see if our frame rate goes up. Oh, look at that. Our lows are now 89 FPS and we're getting close to our refresh rate 118 fps 119 fps average 
Oh, and it's a lot smoother to play now too. So it looks like this card isn't very good for capturing, so it probably wouldn't be very good for streaming either. But if you just wanted to play, this is definitely playable now. That's running so good. Let's get to some action. Oh, unlucky for that guy. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy seeing this old hardware play new games. Now lows are definitely a lot higher. It's unfortunate I couldn't screen capture with the actual computer, but I could invest in a capture device. Just let me know if you want to see more of this kind of content. We can push this computer way harder. Should I put a 3080 in it? What do you want to see? Let me know in the comments. I'm keen to keep going with this. Or maybe we could do a giveaway. Would you guys be interested in winning this computer? Let me know. Put it down in the comments. Subscribe and we'll see what happens. Over 100 FPS easy. Averaging 88 FPS and 60 FPS 1% load. Alright, we secured the victory. But my bloody GoPro battery went flat, didn't it? Right at the end. But never mind. Happy days, it runs great. Let's jump onto some Fortnite. Fortnite is way less demanding. I got it running in 2K on high settings with just the view distance turned down a little bit. $200 PC gaming in 2K at 144 Hz. Jumping in is by far the most demanding part on your hardware. But this is running butter smooth. Our average FPS is just under our refresh rate of our monitor. Perfect. Unfortunately I didn't have any speakers so there's no real good sound with this clip. But here's a little compilation oh, of my kills God I got in this game. I didn't win but I came pretty close. What are you running for bruh? Gotta love the new sprint. You really can chase them now. Jump over him. Headshot! <laughs> How many hundreds of damage did I do? Hey, you saw my kill. Hammer time. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, Missy Tedo. Shotgun. Oh, yeah. What are you doing, bro? Jump the gap. Shotgun. Oh, yeah. Haha, <laughs> got him. Love the red eye for long range. Oh, just keep missing. Oh, no. Smoked me. Oh, there's someone behind me. Amazing what a free gig high-end graphics card can do. I can't believe it. It plays so well. Look at this. Over 200 FPS. 173 FPS average and 65 FPS 1% lows. So what about next time? I'm going to go and set up this mid-tier system with the RX 580 graphics card that I bought factory refurbished from Chinese crypto miners. It even has a free year warranty and it was only 77 euros. Free shipping? Let's give it a go. Also I'll have a full price list down in the description of all the parts that I've used for this build. So join me next time and I'll catch you in another fortnight.